Hello, good to be with you and sharing worship again. Today in the lectionary is down as the 11th in ordinary time. But I often think ordinary is not an ordinary Sunday. Every Sunday, every day that we worship God is special. So even though it's regarded as ordinary, we are specially joining together to praise and worship God. And let's pray together. Loving Lord, your grace draws us to your presence. Your peace unites us in your love. Your hope inspires us to praise your glory. May our worship be worthy of you. Amen. And so we join in our first hymn, O Thou Who Camest From Above, and the words will be on the screen. Our Old Testament reading is now going to be read for us by Irene Johnston. The Old Testament reading is from Exodus, chapter 19, verses 1 to 8, at Mount Sinai. In the third month after the Israelites left Egypt, on the very day they came to the desert of Sinai. After they set out from Rephidim, they entered the desert of Sinai, and Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the house of Jacob, and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt, and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. 
Now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. So Moses went back and summoned the elders of the people and set before them all the words that the Lord had commanded him to speak. The people all responded together. We will do everything the Lord has said. So Moses brought their answer back to the Lord. Amen. And let us continue in worship as we pray together. And this is a prayer from The Roots magazine. Let's pray. We come before you, gracious God, just as we are. We come with our weaknesses and our vulnerabilities. We come with our fears and apprehensions. We come with faith and doubt. We come to offer and receive. We come to you, the King of love, in the name of your Son and in the power of your Spirit. Amen. And we share together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And now we join together in what is probably my favourite Graham Kendrick song, All I Once Held Dear.
John Stewart is now going to read our New Testament lesson for today. This reading is Matthew, starting at chapter 9, verse 35, going all the way through to chapter 10, verse 8. Jesus has pity for the people. Jesus went round visiting all the towns and villages. He taught in the synagogues, preached the good news about the kingdom, and healed people with every kind of disease and sickness. As he saw the crowds, his heart was filled with pity for them, because they were worried and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. So he said to his disciples, The harvest is large, but there are few workers to gather it in. Pray to the owner of the harvest that he will send out workers to gather in his harvest. Jesus called his twelve disciples together and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James and his brother John, the sons of Zebedee, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Patriot and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. These twelve men were sent out by Jesus with the following instructions. Do not go to any Gentile territory or any Samaritan towns. Instead, you are to go to the lost sheep of the people of Israel. Go and preach. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick. Bring the dead back to life. Heal those who suffer from dreadful skin diseases and drive out demons. You have received without paying, so give without being paid. Amen. While I've been at home through lockdown, I started looking through my bookshelves to find something to read. And I took a book that I had read before by Donald English. And then when I was looking at the reading for today, it reminded me of some words of Donald English. When he was secretary of Home Mission Division, he used to go out and lead courses on mission. And at the end of the courses, when the people were ready to go out on mission, they'd often say to him, oh, that was really good. Can we do that again? And I just wondered, when Jesus sent the disciples out, if they were a bit like the people in church, what, heal lepers? But I'm a fisherman, not a doctor. Oh, Jesus, I didn't really understand that. Can we go through it again? I just wonder what they were saying to Jesus. Now, Matthew doesn't tell us what happened when the disciples came back. But Luke, in one of his accounts, does tell about the 72 coming back. And Donald English, in his book, said, They came back and said, Master, it's wonderful. We actually cast out demons in your name. People came who were ill and we healed them in your name. And Jesus said, yes, I saw Satan fall from heaven. And Donald English wrote, why was that? Not because he taught them some magical tricks, but because they'd been with him. They'd somehow got in on what he was about. And as a result, what he did, they could do. The people who came to Jesus and began to trust in him found out that they could do things they didn't think they could do before. Now, that during the time the disciples were away, I don't think Jesus sat down and had a well-deserved rest. I think he was praying for them. A few weeks ago, it was Ascension Day, often a time when we think that Jesus went back to heaven. But I heard it described as a time when Jesus actually brought us nearer to God and that he intercedes with God for us. So we can be assured that like the disciples when they left Jesus behind and went off on their own, Jesus is caring and praying for us. 
So the wonders of the internet, the other week I watched the celebration weekend from Cliff College in Derbyshire. And one of the speakers talked about proclamation and how there were three ways in which the good news was proclaimed through preaching, through testimony, and through good deeds. Many of us will think that we're not doing anything at the moment. But yes, the good news of Jesus is still being proclaimed in many different ways. We know through the church services on the internet that the word is being proclaimed. And in fact, I read the other day that about 25% of the population are tuning into these services compared to just 6% who go to church on a Sunday. Good deeds are being done as churches work with food banks and offer other practical advice. So maybe it's us to think about testimony because we won't all be called to be preachers or go and work in a food bank or the like. But do we proclaim the gospel through testimony? And I'm glad I picked up this book by Donald English because he talked about this. He tells of a lady who went to the church and she was one of those who didn't want to be there because she kept asking awkward questions. One night after Bible study, she walked home with a young student, still asking her awkward questions. And the student just didn't know how to answer her. So what she did was tell her testimony. She said it was all she could do. But that's what the woman needed to hear. And through that night, she had a profound meeting with God and felt a weight lifted from her and a peace with God. COVID-19 has done for the world what God has been trying to do for years, and that's turn it upside down. For now, it isn't the people earning the biggest salary or going on the most expensive holiday who are important. It's the ones who are caring for us day by day, who are usually overlooked. Nurses, hospital porters and cleaners, delivery drivers, dustbin men and the like. And I do hope and pray that at the end of this, we will remember them and not go back to the old ways of looking at money and status as the most important things in the world. And we've seen how quickly COVID-19 can spread from person to person. And that's why we've got to stay so far apart from one another. Another of the speakers at the Cliff College Festival said that the good news of Jesus spread quickly after Pentecost as the people who'd gathered in Jerusalem for the festival went back to their hometowns and told people about what had happened. And as we've seen how quickly COVID-19 has spread around the world, wouldn't it be good if the good news of Jesus was once again spread around the world to give in these dark days a new vision of how God's kingdom will be when the last are first and those on the margins are welcomed into the centre. And because we've got in on what Jesus was about, we can do what he could do. So let's do our preaching and our good deeds, but also let's gossip the gospel and tell people what Jesus means to us. Amen.
Let us now join in our prayers of intercession. Can I ask that when I say the words, God of peace, you will respond with, may your peace be known. God of peace, may your peace be known. Let us pray. Where there is conflict between nations and within nations, where people live in fear of the bullet and the bomb, when parents weep for children who have been killed, God of peace, may your peace be known. In homes filled with anger, cruelty and neglect, where there are no safe places, where poverty and addiction bring suffering and pain, God of peace, may your peace be known. To those whose minds are tormented by depression, to those whose hold on life is fragile, to those whose lives are filled with stress, God of peace, may your peace be known. To those who are nearing the end of life, to those who love and care for them, God of peace, may your peace be known. May your peace be known to us, and may we be bearers of your peace in our world. Amen. Thank you, Kathleen. And we come to the end of our service as we join in our closing hymn, Lord for the Years.
Well, thank you to everybody who's taken part in our service this week. That's Irene, John and Kathleen. And next week, we shall welcome Chris back and hope he's had a good holiday and that that booking was very pleasant and he really enjoyed his time in the back garden. So let's close together. Go to serve, go to love, go to bring healing, go to bring peace, go in the strength of the Father, go in the power of Jesus, go united by the Spirit, go and know his grace. Amen.